Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So, up until now, each time the enemy attacks us, it's always been the same attack. And this week, we are going to fix that. We're going to make different attack waves, we're going to introduce a turn counter, and we're even going to make it so that the enemy talks to you in between the attacks. So first thing that we need to do is go to events, go to your enemy sprite, and we are going to get out when I receive, and we're going to make a new broadcast. This is going to be called end player's turn. Now, when are we going to make this broadcast happen? Let's fix that now, shall we? Let's go to the fight sprite and look around until you find set mode to evade broadcast evade. Now, we want to change this broadcast to end player's turn and let's get rid of this set mode to evade. Now, go to your heart sprite and have a look around until you find your mercy code. So we're looking for define mercy and then look down until we find if key Z pressed. And we need to do the same thing here. Change this broadcast to end player's turn and get rid of this set mode to evade because the set mode to evade is now going to be what happens when the attack wave starts and we want something to happen in between that. We want the enemy to be able to talk to you. So let's program that in now, shall we? Head back to your enemy sprite and look for your when I receive end player's turn. Now we're going to make a new variable to keep track of what turn we are on. So go to variables, click on make a variable and call this variable turn. Make it for all sprites and we need to make sure that when we start the game we want to set the turn to zero. Make sure that goes underneath your when green flag clicked code and whenever we end the turn we're going to increase the turn counter by one. So let's get out a change turn by one. Now we need to update our mode variable. So get out set mode to end of turn. And we'll let our box sprite know what it should be displaying during the end of turn mode. So go to your box sprite. Let's copy this one here if mode equals evade and we're going to make it if mode equals end of turn. Let's take that and put it here. You'll notice that a lot of the time when the enemy is talking to the heart, the heart is in the evade box ready for the attack to begin. So now let's go back to our enemy sprite and at this point we're going to make a new broadcast. We're going to broadcast new message and we're going to call this message heart go to box. We're actually going to use this as the broadcast that makes our heart move into the center of where our box is. So press OK, head to your heart sprite and have a look around for when I receive evade. Now we're going to click on the evade and change that to heart go to box. This is just going to make it a bit more clear what this broadcast actually does. And we probably don't need the evade broadcast at this point. So head back to your enemy sprite and let's go to my blocks and click on make a block. We're going to call this block dialogue one. So dialogue is just a word for when a video game character is talking to you and then press OK. And now go to looks and get out say hello for two seconds. At this point, you can decide what the dialogue is going to be for your game. So I'm just going to have my enemy say uh, hello for one second because two seconds is quite a long time. Uh, then and at this point, you can even change the costume of your character if you want. 
I'm going to switch the costume to the scary looking one, which is Blue Soul. I'll put a little bit of a weight in here, 0.5 I think. What we'll do for now is wrap this whole thing in an if turn equals one. So now this whole thing is only going to run if our turn counter is on one. So let's get out a dialogue one and put it right here. The story of what your character says and how they talk is going to be up to you. So you can just keep going with this, keep adding more and more dialogues for each turn. Now for now, we have only one, what's called a linear path, meaning that everything proceeds in a straight line. We have turn one, then turn two, then turn three, then turn four. But later on, we're going to add in choices, different things that happen depending if you show mercy or if you fight, if you use items and that kind of thing. But this is a good opportunity to like write a lot of dialogue for your character and you can always move things a little bit around later on. Now you can write as many of these as you like, but make sure that you're updating the if turn equals in each of them. And then when you're done, you need to make sure that you have at the end a set mode to evade. And if you want as well, you could even have just a little bit of a wait here. Doesn't need to be very long and that's entirely optional. See what feels right to you when they finish talking. Should the attack start straight away or should there be a little bit of a pause? So now that we have different dialogue on different turns, it only makes sense that we have different attacks on different turns as well. So head across to your projectile sprite and at this point, it might even be worth just calling this the attack sprite because it does so much more than just the projectiles now. I'm just going to rename this. You can leave it the same if you like. And if you have any problems with your code, because sometimes your code will refer to the name of a sprite, you can just change it back and it should work okay. Then have a look around for your when green flag clicked. Now I've got this massively long attack underneath it. I'm gonna take this whole thing and move it where I've got a lot more space. And then I'm going to get all of these attacks and I'm going to split them up. Now we're gonna do something very similar to what we did with our dialogue my blocks. Click on my blocks and click on make a block now I'm going to call this attack pattern one. And I'm gonna get our define attack pattern one and put it just here. And why not? Let's go attack pattern two and move that over here. Now at this point, I really recommend you play around with different combinations of all our attack types, all our projectile types. And you can even get creative with this. Name your attack patterns something memorable, like this one here with all of the gasters. I'm going to call that attack pattern gaster surprise. I'm just gonna move that there. This is your opportunity to get really creative with all of the hard work we've done in making all of these different types of attacks. Come up with combinations that you think are interesting. So for example, here's one that I've done that I'm really happy with. I do a gravity slam in one direction, and then I do a scatter attack coming from the opposite direction. Now, if you wanna test these attacks, just get all of the code from them and pop them into your if mode equals evade. So let's see what this looks like, shall we? Excellent, we've got our dialogue working. Very good. And now you can see this attack that I've made. We've got this cool effect where we get slammed on a wall and then we have to avoid the scatter projectiles coming from that opposite direction. When you're finished testing the attack, 
just move it back under its define. We need to decide what is the order of the attack patterns. So have a look in your if mode equals evade and let's get out an if and we'll do something very similar to what we did with our dialogue. We'll say if turn equals one, then we'll do, let's say attack pattern one. Let's copy this and put this right here. If the turn equals two, we'll do our attack pattern two. And if the turn equals three, we'll do our attack pattern ghast a surprise. And then after all of this code has run, we can put in a broadcast red soul just to make sure that you're back to being a red soul again and set mode to menu and that will end the attack. Now you might be wondering why have I put these turn equals if statements outside of the my blocks and that's so that we can reuse these attack patterns. So if we get to turn four, what happens then? If you program in special attacks for all of your turns, you could do something like start the whole process again. So we could create a block that goes right here and we can call it a attack pattern manager. So let's do that now. Attack pattern manager. And let's put our attack pattern manager right before our broadcast red soul. And we'll make some space underneath this. You can create some if statements that check to see if you're past a certain turn. So for example, we could check to see if we're higher than turn three. And if we are, then we can do something interesting. We could, for example, use a random number to decide which attack happens next. Or we could cycle through and play the attacks again. So to do that, we just need to make a new variable and call it attack pattern. Let's make it for this sprite only. We shouldn't need it outside of our attack sprite. And then we could, for example, change attack pattern and then all you need is if statements that are checking on the attack pattern before it runs an attack so if our attack pattern is equal to one we would run attack pattern one so once you've got all of your attack patterns in with their own if then at the end all we need is to put in if attack pattern equals the last number, which for me is three. Set attack pattern back to zero, which then will increase to one and the whole thing starts again. Speaking of setting the attack pattern to zero, we need to make sure that we do that at the beginning of the game. So scroll up until you find when green flag clicked and make sure you put in a set attack pattern to zero underneath it. So you might have a series of attacks that repeat themselves towards the end of your game. Maybe your three favorite attacks or your three hardest attacks. You could also randomize this if you wanted. So we could do something like get out an if statement. And if the turn is higher than nine, maybe, what we can do is put this right here and set our attack pattern to a random number. Let's say one to three. And you don't actually need too many attacks sometimes. Here's an example of an attack with only two different attack types in it, but I've wrapped the whole thing in a repeat 10. I call it the Gaster Wave. Let's give it a test, shall we? Let's have a look for our if mode equals evade. Let's pull everything out of there and let's get out our attack pattern gaster wave and we'll have a look. So what should happen is there should be waves and then in between the different waves should be uh, a gaster. So here we go with our wave attack and then the gaster appears. Yep, there we go. 
So we could even change this to make it more than one gaster at once. There is a slight pause in the continual wave, which is a bit of a shame, but I'm still mostly happy with how this looks. So now that that test is done, I'm just going to take that attack pattern gaster wave and put all the code back. Now let's see how it all comes together. We initiate the dialog for turn one. And you can see our turn variable ticking up there. We'll see if I can survive this wave. And now at the end of the wave, what should happen is we get turned back into a red soul and we can do something else. Now, did you also notice that some of the projectiles were still disappearing? They were still uh, on the screen by the time we went back to the menu. Now we can fix that, but for now, let's see what happens. And there we go. We've got our second series of dialogue and our second attack starts. Quite different to the first. And again, what you might have just seen there was we actually took damage while we were in the menu. So we definitely might need to fix that, but let's just see what happens now if we move to no dialogue. Yep, there we go. No dialogue, we just move straight to our third attack. So you can leave some terms blank if you don't need the enemy to talk to you every single time at the end of every turn. Now we need to fix that problem where we had projectiles still on the screen when we entered the menu mode. So we need to put in some form of weight right here, right above the broadcast red soul. Now we could just put in like a, a weight one seconds or a weight two seconds. Or we have a handy little variable that we can use to solve this problem for us. Hands up. Who remembers the current projectiles variable? It's this one here. This increases every time you make a projectile and it decreases every time you delete a projectile. So what we could do is put in a wait until. And we can wait until the current projectiles equals zero. Now to make sure you have this code that will make the current projectiles bit work, you need to look for your when I start as clone. And you should have right underneath when I start as clone, change current projectiles by one. And on the very bottom, you should have change current projectiles by minus one. Now, if in your project, not all of your projectiles are properly deleting themselves, that is actually quite useful to know because that's probably a problem. You need all of your projectiles to delete themselves at some point. But if you have the problem and you just want a nice quick fix, then don't worry about this wait until, just put in a wait one second or two seconds, whichever feels better to you. Now, some viewers might have noticed that our text boxes don't work the same way that Undertale text boxes work. Can you see in the GIF in front of me how this is going? It's actually spelling it out character by character, letter by letter. And next week, we're going to create some code that does the same thing using the Scratch text boxes. But for now, that's all you need for this week. Subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications for when the next episode is ready for you. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next or if you need any help with your project. And aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.